I'm here to discuss this is Hojat Akani from uh, UC Santa Barbara. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Thanks for the introduction. I also want to thank all of these wonderful people that helped me for this project. And today I talk about the limits of machine learning based malware classifiers when they use only a static analysis features. Before everything, let me just briefly explain what is packing. Traditionally, packing was introduced just for compression. And in that description, what packing does, it basically compresses the original file into some packed sections. And later on, when the packed file is executed, the decompression stop, which is in the executable section, unpacks the packed sections and rebuilds the original file in the memory. It didn't take much long time for malware authors to figure out that this idea that you can reveal the actual code only during execution is very helpful. And they started to employ packers in their malicious programs. So we know that uh, and these, uh, during these days, most packers are not this simple anymore. And they often use some um, methods of obfuscation or encryption on uh, not only compression. And packing also can happen at multiple layers. And it can also be much more complex when the, where the unpacking routines are not executed necessarily in a straight line. Or some packers, they also tend to reveal only a single fragment of the code at any given time. And of course, in most cases, there are some anti-debugging or anti-reverse engineering techniques employed in packers. So we know that packing can be very complex. But in general, why does packing matter? Because it hampers the analysis of the code, which is, of course, necessary for malware classification. So we can say that from this point of view, uh, packing uh, makes malware classification much more challenging, especially when it comes to static analysis, because it doesn't look at the actual executed code. In fact, because of the limitations existed um, with signature-based detectors, especially when it comes to packing, dynamic analysis became quite popular. And, but because of its dynamic nature, dynamic analysis is very time-consuming, and it requires a substantial amount of resources. So mainly for this limitation, and also as machine learning became quite dominant, um, some anti-malware companies, they started to ship their products that uh, they are only based on static analysis features and some machine learning uh, technique. And that solution, in fact, is very appealing because without any need of executing a sample, you can instantly say if the sample is benign or malicious, which is awesome. But is it possible, especially when we are packing, which means the features, at least static features, should be obfuscated, right? But before answering these questions, let's take a step back and see if benign software programs use packing or not. Because if they do not use packing, then the moment we detect a sample as packed, we can say that, OK, it's malicious, and it's a safe decision. But in fact, we observe that packing is quite common in benign software programs. This is a data that we observed from 2015 to 2018, and it shows the percentage of packed samples in both benign and malicious samples. And in fact, we observe that for um, in some quarters, at least 50% of the benign samples were packed. And this is also overlapping with related work. For example, in this study, they observed 50%, more than 50% of benign samples were packed in 2014. So if we can say that any approach that detects packing as a sign of maliciousness will lead to high false positive which is not good. And uh, in fact, at the time we started this work, we were curious to see how engines on virus total handle packing. We gathered more than um, 600 Windows 10 binaries located in System32 folder. Of course, they are binary, and we packed them with Temida, and we submitted those to virus total. And here is the histogram of number of detections we got. For example, for more than 550 samples, at least 10 detections were triggered. And I should say that Temida is a very well-known packer. It's being used by many benign software programs like Spotify. But there is a bigger problem here, that there are some related works that they, that they rely only on uh, these engines on virus total, especially, including some recent works. So the, the, their data set, in their data set, they might have some samples that are packed and benign, but also labeled as malicious. And as I just showed you that, uh, that this problem can happen. So the results that they have published might be biased in this uh, case. 
But apart from that, in this work, we mainly want to answer these questions. If static analysis on, at the end of the day on packed binaries provide rich enough features for malware classification or not. We have, we have done many experiments, but here I just give you uh, the most important ones. But before that, let me just briefly explain how we put our data sets together. The nature of our work requires to know, for example, if the sample is benign or malicious, of course, and also if the binary is packed or not packed. To determine such labels, we took various uh, extensive steps and we put a lot of time, including sometimes manually looking at samples. But here, for the sake of time, I just emphasize that we mainly relied on two different independent dynamic analysis engines and sandboxes to look at the behavior of each sample. And all the, mm, the details of our steps uh, can be found in the paper. And we think the steps that we took have to be taken by any related work that aims to um, propose a malware classifier. And here is the composition of our first data set, wild data set, which contains around 51K executables observed in the wild, coming from two different independent sources. But some of our experiments, uh, for them, we, we need to know also which packer is used to pack uh, the sample. So to know such information, we created the lab data set by packing all the executables in the wild data set with nine different packers, including some free and commercial packers. And this is the number of samples we got. And I just uh, need to say that uh, we discarded those samples that were broken after packing. That's why the numbers here don't add up. And also, we extracted nine fe different feature categories that are shown to be useful for malware classification in both industry and uh, academia. And, um, uh, especially in the case of uh, packing. Now let's back to our research question. The first question we want to answer is that, do packers preserve static analysis features that are useful for malware classification or not? So for, uh, to answer that question, we did this experiment. That first, we exclude packed benign samples from the training set. So the only packed samples in the training set are malicious. Then we keep adding more packed binary samples to the training set to see how the classifier performs. And we always evaluated the classifier on a fixed test set that has both um, packed binary and not packed binary samples. And at the beginning, when there is no packed binary sample in the training set, the false positive rate for packed executables in the test set was around 100%. This clearly shows that the classifier learned packing is a sign of maliciousness. And it makes sense because that's what we had in the day, training set. But when we add packed benign samples in the training set, the classifier gets better and better and, um, to avoiding uh, detection of packing as a sign of maliciousness. And at the extreme case, when we have any benign samples as packed, and we have packed malicious samples also packed with the same set of packers, we observe that, um, an error rate around 10 to 15%. This shows that, I mean, this is not perfect, of course, but this is way lower than what we expected, surprisingly. And this clearly shows that there are some useful features, in fact, after we perform packing. To identify those useful features, we focus on one packer at a time. And we have our findings in the paper for each packer, but here I just give you a couple of examples. For example, we observed that some packers, like Temido, they often keep the, the rich header, which contains some information about object files and compiler used to create the sample. And we, we also observed packers often keep .cop file headers, although they do encrypt and compress these resources, but they keep the file headers. And also, as UPX keeps one API for each DLL. This is also a very well-known fact. And we observed that all these pieces of information are helpful for malware classification over our data sets, which are two different independent data sets. So we can say that putting all these findings together, packers preserve some information when packing the uh, programs that might be even helpful for malware classification, but such information does not necessarily represent the real nature of samples. Now consider that we can, I just showed you that you can distinguish between packed benign and packed malicious samples over your training set, but will such a classifier perform well in real world scenarios? And by real world, I mean generalization to unseen packers. And 
adversarial examples. Generalization to unseen packers matters because we have runtime packers that are evolving, and malware authors often tend to use their own customized packers. In this experiment, we exclude one packer from the training set, uh, here in this example, P compact. So we train the classifier on samples packed with the other eight packers in the lab data set, and we evaluated that later on uh, samples packed with tame, uh, P compact. Sorry. And we observed a very uh, high error rate for P compact and some other packers when they are withheld, like T, T log, K crunchy, and so forth. So here we clearly have uh, some lack of transferability for some packers. Also, in the next experiment, we train the classifier on the whole lab data set, on all of the nine packers, and then we evaluated it on packed ex executables we observed in the wide, wide data set. And interestingly, we observed the false negative rate of around 42%. This is quite high, and it's interesting. It shows that the features that are useful even um, for, uh, in the presence of a packing, apparently they are not useful when we have packing in the wild. And the, these samples are changed in a way that these features became uh, not useful anymore. And it, this experiment matters because also, as I just said, pack, uh, malware authors, they often use to their own customized packers, not off-the-shelf packers. So we can say that we have poor generalization to unseen packers. Now I want to talk about adversarial examples. We know that by related work has shown that machine learning based malware detectors uh, are uh, vulnerable to adversarial examples. We expect since packing produces features that are not directly coming from the actual code, original code, generating such adversarial examples should be an easier task for an adversary. In this experiment, we tra train our classifier on a training set that has both not packed benign and packed benign samples. So our model is not biased at the end of the day to detect packing as a sign of maliciousness. And in fact, we tested that on packed malicious samples in our test set, and we observed an, an error rate, an error, uh, rate lower than 2%. But then just by adding, appending some benign strings to these samples, we could achieve the evasion for all of them. And by benign strings, I mean strings that are extracted from B9 samples in the training set. Of course, we have some prior knowledge here, but we could apply the same trick to, an, to a static evasion competition launched by Endgame, when they gave us their classifier and 150 malicious samples. In this experiment, we took the B9 strings from Spotify, from the resource sections and license and manifest of the samples, and by just appending those strings to these 150 samples, we could achieve the evasion for 50% of, of the samples. And we didn't do anything more, just this. And our intuition behind this move was that Temida is packed, sorry, Spotify is packed with Temida, and so from the static analysis-based uh, classifier point of view, what it is, it's a dilemma that uh, I should detect Spotify, which is packed as uh, malicious, or I should latch on features that are not necessarily representing the real nature of the sample. And in fact, it works for our case. And interestingly, a group of independent researchers, they did the same trick to bypass an AI-based anti-malware engine. They just took the strings from some an, uh, online gaming program, and they did that against silence, I guess. So we have a vulnerability to trivial adversarial examples also. As a recap, today I talk about the limitations of um, static analysis-based um, uh, techniques that use machine learning for malware classification. I pointed out two major issues here. First, data set pollution, because we have some engines on virus total that detect packing, and we have, at the same time, some related work, including recent ones that use these engines. So the results might be biased. And also, I showed that, in fact, packing preserves some information. And you can distinguish between packed benign and packed malicious samples over your training set. But such a classifier will not perform well in real world settings, which you have unseen packers, of course, and uh, an adversary. That's it. I just want to say that uh, the source code of our experiments and our data sets of around 400k executives with the behavior of samples and labels are available on GitHub. We hope it is useful for the future research. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions?
Very interesting work. Uh, Tudor Dimitris from the University of Maryland. Uh, I uh, am uh, curious about this result uh, that um, uh, where you, you trained based on the lab data set and then it turned out that it doesn't, you have 40% false negatives on, on the wild executables. So intuitively this seems right, but I was wondering if you can like uh, dig a, dive a little bit deeper and explain why, why this happens. I guess we have uh, some findings about the uh, features that are that were useful in that case. For example, uh, some packers they leave some API imports in the training set. So when you train your classifier, it it looks at those API imports and it says that okay, these are at the end of the day you have. If you look at the I don't know in our case, uh, uh, if you look at your classifier, you see some very top imported features, but when you have the packing in the wild, those features are not useful anymore. And the, since you didn't see those packing routines, it doesn't work. And also we have the same thing for reach header. For example, reach header becomes a top, very important feature, but you can simply strip those reach header and it's still your sample is, a, uh, uh, is a, an executable. Did I answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Can I ask another one? Yeah, sure. So, uh, Based on your results, what do you think, you know, what's next? Like, what, what is a promising direction for malware detection? Yeah, I guess for sure, I think if you want to create a ground truth, you should take more steps. You should rely on behavior of the samples, at least for creating your ground truth, even if you're proposing an static based method. But also, what I believe is that from at least now, static analysis is not enough because we have very known problems with packing. There is no generic on packing. And of course, dynamic analysis is taking a lot of time and it's always not scalable. The, yeah, these issues are with dynamic analysis, but I think static analysis is not enough, unfortunately. Uh, hi, Juan Caballero in the software. Uh, very nice work. Um, just a clarification. I mean, in the, in the talk, when you keep referring to malware classification, you are really talking about malware detection no? all the time. I mean, typically when I think about classification, I'm thinking about putting it into families or maybe putting it into the different packers that are actually being used, right? But here it's only like whether it's benign or malicious. Is that correct? Yes, you're right. I mean, the terminology is a bit confusing. I'm, yeah, basically what we, we have done is more malware detections. Although we have some minor experiments in the paper that they are more about classification, but here, yeah. I talk about malware detection. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you.